吸猫，吸 means suck， 猫 is cat。<笑> Welcome to Mosaic of China, a podcast about people who are making their mark in China. I'm your host Oscar Fuchs, and today's episode is the final special compilation from season one. If you've been following these ten compilations from the start, you'll remember that the whole reason I put them together was as a way to buy me some time for the world to return back to normal before starting to record season two. Well, I said that back in April, and it's now September. And it hasn't quite happened, has it? But in the last few weeks, I have done some recordings, and I'm happy to say that I have recorded half of the next season already. I don't record the episodes in the same order of release, so I still have a busy few weeks trying to fill in all the gaps. But it's looking like the new series will be ready before the end of the year. So please enjoy this last compilation from season one. It's all about the guests' favorite words or phrases in Chinese. And I'll be back before you know it with more in the run-up to season two. Angie Wu, the jewelry craftsman from episode 18. When I grew up, my mom always cared about the inner beauty. She was always trying to use this word called qi zi. If you separate the word, it means the quality of your qi. It's like an inner beauty, a grace, and elegance. And it's something my mom would say: something you cannot buy. You have to nurture it. You have to build it, and it has to be from childhood. Like if it's outer beauty, it's something that doesn't last. So she always wants us to build this inner beauty, qi zi. Noah Sheldon, the documentary filmmaker from episode nine. I have a least favorite chabudo. A chabudo. Ah. I. Absolutely despise that. Really,、I'm、yeah, like, that's actually one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> It's you know, in in terms of working and stuff, and if you're really going for excellence,、mm. it's this really dangerous、mm. kind of idea of it's good enough. Right. There is a time for chabudwa, and there's a time for you know, get it right. And right. obviously, in your line of work, there's more perfectionism than chabudwa. Yeah, but you're right. You're right. There is a very positive side of it. It's just yeah. When when you don't want to hear it, it's the last thing you exactly. It's the last、exactly. thing you want to hear. <laughs> Lizanthia Taylor, the pain expert from episode twenty-eight. Chabudwa. I'll tell you why it's my favourite phrase. Yes. So I'm Australian. So we have this great saying in Australia that, like, she'll be right, mate, which basically means I don't, I don't really care. But、right. it's someone else's problem. I've done enough. And to me, that's chabudwa. Just, just doing enough. Yeah. Nini Sum, the artist from episode sixteen. 自然而然 It's like very zen、mm. and self-satisfying and、uh, natural flow. You cannot force things to happen, but rather feel the feeling and go with the flow and be true to yourself. <laughs> Greg Nance, the ultramarathon athlete from episode twenty-three. Yi Shan Bu Rong Er Hu, which is a、uh, one mountain cannot have. Two tigers, and for me, that's a great parable about leadership. Ultimately,、uh, you need accountability, and you need people responsible. Just like that one tiger on that one mountain. Is that something about having two co-founders? It might be. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Jorge Lucio, the marketer for Sprite, from episode five. Well, honestly, and, and I feel very bad because、uh, I don't speak very good Chinese, and I would say that amongst of my friends, which is like very, very few, it's、uh, Huan Pinalu Fu Xinlu, which is <laughs> my street. Astrid Pokosian, the violinist from episode four. Fancy love. It's one of the most frequent things I've saying. I'm, I keep saying all the time, fancy love, and I, I, it's very hard,、really、hard to even translate what it is. It's just when you get really frustrated of of, of something, you just keep saying fancy love. I've only heard Thai ma fan le, but Thai ma ma fan is also <laughs> the fan. It's the same fan. Yeah, yeah. it's annoying. Yeah. Annoying. Well, there you go. Now I'm gonna switch. Now I'm gonna say fancy love. Yes, please. Lexi Comstock, the cookie supplier from episode twenty. So I have a very, I'm very lucky. I have amazing neighbors, and I have a very strong relationship with them. And they always are asking me, no matter the time of day, no matter if I've just seen them like five minutes before, Trifan Lama, which is like, have you eaten? And I just think that's so sweet. I'm like, yeah, thank you for checking up on me and making sure I'm staying well fed. 
Stefan de Monco, the events company CEO from episode 19. So had you asked me 10 years ago, I would have told you easily Mayo Wenti. Um, like, uh, okay, let's, let's move forward and get things done. And I think that's changing. I think 10 years ago, there's never something that cannot be done. Um, it's just a matter of adding more people and, and to get things done. Uh, now you have to do things um, the proper way. So it's a, a very dynamic um, environment. So then if it would have been Mayo Wenti, which is no problem, is your favorite phrase now Johan Dua Wenti? I would not say so. Obviously, there's always ways to get things done, but you have to play by the books. Yael Frajun, the historical researcher from episode 12. Ayo. <laughs> Ayo. That's very much, I, I don't even notice that I'm using it. You know, it's, it's so natural for me now. And it's like a, oh my God, or how would you describe it? Yeah, something like, oh gosh, or something like, yeah. yeah. Usually out of frustration, isn't it? Yes. Laurie Lee, the private club GM from episode 10. I like Shi Mao. Shi Mao, actually, the word is come from Han Dynasty. The original meaning is outstanding people. The, the next meaning is uh, about uh, the people who is in, in the society. So I like this word because it's really, you know, city feeling like Shanghai, between style and fashion. Srinivas Yanamandra, the compliance leader from episode 15. I don't know whether you heard that word. It's uh, Duang. It's actually in 2015, Jackie Chan, uh, when he was uh, doing a kind of an interview uh, for some shampoo ad, it seems, uh, he simply said uh, that my hair after applying this uh, shampoo is look like Duang. Uh, and he said. <laughs> Sebastian Denez, the inclusion advocate from episode 11. Tinbudong. <laughs> um, I don't understand. I, I, I love this one because if you say I don't understand, for example, in France, uh, my home country, or I don't know, maybe in England, people look at you and they say, ah, oh, another one that comes and he doesn't understand the language. And here it's a completely different attitude. They laugh with you. And sometimes you keep on talking Chinese and you're just like, Tim Budong again, right? Uh, or many times they make the effort to make themselves understand, right? So I, I like this construction of a word that you speak in Chinese and saying, I don't get it, and the doors that this opens. Eric Olander, the journalist from episode three. In Chinese, they have these things called chongyu, and you will speak in these idioms and these phrases that can get a very complex idea into just normally four characters. So they have one called yang er feng lao, which means that the, the young, when you grow up, you are taking care of your parents. And I just absolutely love how, in this culture, elderly people are cared for and looked after and valued. And in my culture, uh, for the most part, older people oftentimes are not. Okto Chung, the fashion designer from episode 30. That means you are good in love, you need to have a good personality, you need to be kind to attract the things towards you, but you need to walk steady to walk far. But if which is just uh, when I translate in English, it looks a little bit stupid. <laughs> Tom Barker, the diplomat from episode 25. And this has been my favorite word since day three of being here. It's Wai Wang. I'm probably brutally mispronouncing it, but it's um, the external internet. You know, we're in China where you have the firewall, so you have the internal internet, um, and then you have Wai Wang, the, the internet the rest of the world has. And I just love the fact that they've had to invent a word for what the rest of us just call the internet. Ross Coleman, the theatre producer from episode 22. I am going to tell you um, a phrase that was taught to me by James, my boxing instructor. So when I asked James what it means, he grinned his head off and he said, don't party, won't finish. And he threw his head back and laughed. <laughs> I was like, what does it mean, don't party, won't finish? I was like, I love it, I love it, I love it. Actually, what it means is all good things must come to an end. 
or in the whole world, there is not one party that will not finish. Philippe Gass, the Disney Resort CEO from episode one. Forgive my accent. I know you're going to look at me and say, what is he saying? Jumo Yukwai. Have a good weekend. It was actually the first words I learned in Chinese. And I was known for saying Jomo Yukwai. I mean, I was very active in Chinese on Fridays, typically. But that was what I could use. The other one has been coming later is Haoju Bujian. Long time no see. Uh, just because it's good to reunite with friends and, you know, people you haven't met for a long time. So I like this sentence. I like the way it sounds. Sanford Brown, the biochemist from episode 29. Chenli Jiaxing, Shi Yu Zhu Cha which uh, roughly translates into a journey of a thousand miles begins with a first step. And uh, that to me is a a very inspiring way uh, to really think about when you want to do something and you're not exactly sure how to do it, begin. Maple Zuo, the comedian from episode two. My favorite is called Dao. It's like the truth of the universe. I don't know how to translate that one. Yes. But it's like, uh, it's vague. You didn't know, but it's sometimes you can get it, sometimes you don't get it. I want to like study more about it and then translate in the future. Right. I think English speakers probably know the Japanese reading of Dao, which is Do. Which uh-huh. because you, you, we know Judo and Kendo and oh, yeah, yeah, dao. Aikido. Yeah, that's the Dao, but then the Japanese didn't pronounce <laughs> <laughs> or they changed the pronunciation. Yeah. Gina Lee, the invention company CEO from episode six. And because that's a phrase that is nothing about the result, nothing about anything you do, the purpose. It's just about the effort and the time you put in. It's including so much of the like caring and love. It's like relieving. And sometimes people just say, and that's like a lot of power, yeah. right? Sabrina Chen, the dance program curator from episode 26. Xi Mao. Xi means suck. Mao is cat. (laughs) Actually, you know, Xi Mao is is a word coming from uh, taking drugs. (laughs) Because cat is so adorable and adored by so many young people in China. So sometimes we feel like we are addicted to it. So it's like taking drugs, but the drug is a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Z, the Instagram influencer from episode seven. I really like the word fu, as in dofu. In Chinese, it means rotten. But in another sense, the, that word can also be something that's delicious. You know, you've got f- furu, and this is like rotten breast milk. It's, you know, the mother's milk rotten. And actually, in Chinese culture, this word is used a lot of times for things that are just preserved and uh, pickled or fermented. And actually, in a Western sense, that rotten is always pretty bad. Rotten eggs or rotten person, the the word rotten, rotten wood, there's always a negative connotation. Whereas in Chinese culture, it's not necessarily bad. It's such a complex thing, this character. It can mean tasty things and it can mean rotten women who are obsessive gay men. Um, Or it could just mean tofu. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, okay, that one is hard to unpack. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yang Yi, the broadcaster from episode 21. I I usually say, how bad? It's a little bit like, oh, that's fine. Right. And the the meaning behind that is, maybe it can be better. Nick Yu, the playwright from episode 13. That word is uh, zuo. That is Chinese to talk about the girls. And she will do so many things to make the, the boyfriend will be crazy, but still love her. Only Shanghai girls have this zuo. You know, when, when, when I put this zuo in the play, nobody know how to translate it until now. I don't know. Emily Madge, the aquarium conservationist from episode 14. This is really obvious, but my favorite one is mayo. Because because of the amount of times it's been said to me during the Beluga project. 
and the amount of hurdles we've had because of that word. Mm. So I wouldn't say it was my favorite, but it's the most relevant. Absolutely. <laughs> and just to any non-Chinese speakers, what does it mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> Simon Manetti, the business leader from episode 17. 可遇而不可求. This is something that can be encountered, but not be sought after or chased. So this is something you're just going to have to encounter in life and not try to seek it. And when I first learned it, I was like, oh, okay, there's an English equivalent to this. But then I realized when I tried to translate, that there isn't. And it's such a, a, a beautiful concept. Abe Deo, the tour manager from episode 27. This is my favorite to tell artists ah. so newbie uh, oh hang on hang on i think i know where you're going with this is newbie. is new the cow newbie is uh well, okay <laughs> so it, it means basically like great awesome right but the literal translation is cow vagina um yeah. crowds will shout it at them during shows and stuff really and like, oh yeah so when i try to explain <laughs> that to the artists they all love it because they think it's funny Thank you for listening to this and to the other nine compilations. It has been great to listen back to some of the voices from the season. And I'm really excited to bring you the next season of Mosaic of China. Please follow us on social media to keep in touch with updates. We're on Mosaic of China on Instagram, Facebook and on WeChat. Until now, I've been asking you to use a different account on WeChat, but I finally got my hands on the right username now. And while you are busy adding me on those platforms, I will get busy filling the gaps in the season. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. My pleasure too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great to see you too. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.